The PPT Timeless is a really clean set that kind of reminds me of GMK Cafe, which was a super popular set inspired by coffee. EPPT Timeless is inspired by something a lot more abstract, but these are the colors that the designer chose to represent timelessness. It's kind of hard to critique whether the colors chosen are the right ones due to the abstract nature of the theme, but it does look really good. I think that it would have been interesting for the designers to create a novelties kit to see what they could come up with, but maybe it was too difficult as the set does not offer one. EPPT Timeless does offer two metal artisans though, one from Macero and one from Thok that you can pick up if you would like. I think that they're okay in terms of design, so I personally wouldn't pick one up if I was going to join in on the group buy. I think that it's somewhat unfortunate that the set is running at the same time that Osumi Tsukimi is running. Yes, there are obvious differences between the two sets, with the legends being the most obvious variable, but the color scheme is quite similar. Considering the fact that EPPT Timeless is $29 more, and will probably take longer to deliver, means that there's a possibility that its sales may have been eaten up by the Osumi set. Milky Way Demon Girl is a set inspired by the character Nezuko from Demon Slayer. This set was actually supposed to be a GMK set, but switched to Milky Way Keys due to the GMK timeline being too long. Milky Way Keys has already delivered a few sets to mostly positive reviews, so it was a welcome change to many people who are following this set. The set uses the colors of the clothes that Nezuko wears, which is why the black used in the set is in a jet black and has a warmer tone to it. The expansion kit also has some green keys, which are probably inspired by the bamboo muzzle that she bites. I probably wouldn't use the green keys because I usually don't like pairing green with pink, but it would make sense thematically and give a bit more contrast to the set. There's also a novelties kit as well as a metal artisan that are really well designed and I think should be strongly considered if you're picking up this set. Overall, I do think that Milky Way Demon Girl looks nice, but it's not for me. I definitely understand why the designer chose the colors they chose, but I do prefer a darker black rather than the black that was chosen for this set. It has a slight brownish tone to it and I don't like pairing brown with pink. But, I think that the set will appeal to most people, especially fans of the anime, and will probably sell a large number of units. I wish the designer best of luck, and I hope that they have a successful group buy. GMK Zen Pond is a nice blue set inspired by Zen Ponds and Koi Fish. There are two base kits being offered, one with Hiragana sublegends and one without, but what makes this different compared to a lot of other sets with Japanese sublegends is the fact that the sublegends are UV printed. I don't have much experience with UV printed keycaps, but I have heard that UV printed sublegends aren't as durable compared to Double Shot. It's also supposed to be cheaper though, since the Double Shot process is a lot more complicated. If anyone has any insight or expertise as to the pros and cons to UV printing, leave it down in the comment section below. I'm extremely interested in learning more about this. For this set, the reason why the sublegends are Double Shot is due to the fact that the legends and sublegends are different colors. For some, the UV sublegends might be a deal breaker, but I'm actually very interested and willing to give it a try. If you still like the set, but don't want to take a chance on the UV printing, you can buy the Latin base kit, though I do think it looks a lot more plain and is less interesting. Similar to the sublegends, the novelties will also be UV printed, probably due to the complexity of some of the designs. With UV printing, the novelties kit should have a sharper look, which is one of the benefits of using this technology. GMK Zenpon will also be offering two heavy metal artisans, a blue one and a white one. I think that the blue one is a better looking one out of the two, but both are quite nice. There will also be a collab with Wucha Studios to release a GMK Zenpon themed Iki 68 Aurora. I've talked about other collabs before in some of the other group by videos and also reviewed my own Iki 68 Aurora, so I won't talk about it too much here, but I think it's a great keyboard at a great price. There is currently a vote going on to decide the final design for the Iki 68 Aurora. I'm not sure when this keyboard will go up for sale, but like the GMK Stargaze edition, I am super tempted in picking one up. I think that GMK Zen Pond is a really good looking set. I like the design of the set and the novelties, and I'm really excited for some of the collaborations. The UV printed sublegends might be a deal breaker for some, and I'm not sure how good GMK's UV printing technology is, but if you're willing to give it a shot and would like a dark blue set, I think you should strongly consider picking up GMK Zen Pond. The Bubble 75 looks really promising with a great price, but it is a group buy from Velocifier, so buyer beware. The group buy that they held for the Sun 20 Pro macro pad was a mess, rife with QC issues, so I'd be cautious. I'd personally join in on the group buy for the Sun 20 Pro, and although I didn't have as many issues compared to some of the other people, I did have an LED issue with my PCB, as well as scratches on the included knob. They did run a group buy for a keyboard called the Sun 68, which hasn't been delivered yet, so I guess we'll wait and see if they manage to fix their issues, and if they'll be able to deliver a high quality board. 
The progress for the Sun 68 looks good so far, and it might be able to be delivered soon, so hopefully it arrives before the Bubble 75 group buy ends. There are a couple videos out there showing off the board, and from what I've heard and seen, it looks pretty good. But it is important to remember that these are units being sent to streamers, which means that it's not really representative as to whether their QC will be good this time around. Putting my salt aside, I think that the Bubble 75 is quite interesting. Yes, the sound is largely due to the included foam, which has been a major trend ever since the Vega and Jelly Epoch, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Perhaps from a keyboard designer standpoint, it's not a good design if your keyboard relies on foam to sound good, but for the average user, they probably don't care all that much. Considering the fact that this keyboard will cost $292 for the standard version and $315 for the more premium version, I think that it's a keyboard that a lot of people will consider. Although I don't think that the bottom weight bubble logo looks all that great, you won't be seeing this for daily use, so it's ignorable. The side profile looks pretty cool in my opinion, and I think it's one of the highlights for this board. I would definitely go for a two-tone color option for the top and bottom case for this keyboard, rather than a monocolor board because I think it would provide more contrast and really show off that side profile better. To sum it all up, the Bubble 75 is an attractive looking board with a great sound at a pretty good price. I do have some doubts and worries due to Velocifier and their past record with poor QC, but hopefully they've learned from their past mistakes and have fixed these issues moving forward. I haven't been closely following this board, but it's been on my radar for some time because it's a really good looking keyboard. It looks quite simple and clean from the outside, and I really like the curve on the side profile. The main reason why I didn't follow this interest check closely was due to the fact that the designer predicted that the keyboard would be quite expensive, and yes indeed, this keyboard is not cheap. The Cloudline will cost $585 for Canon Keys, the US vendor, and while the prices have not been finalized for the other proxies, I'm sure that will be quite expensive as well. There's also a limited number of units with 650 total units that will be divided amongst the regional proxies. Canon Keys has the largest allocation with 260 spots that will be region locked. However, they will also be offering a special brass top edition that will have 20 spots and won't be region locked, though it does come at a cost due to the brass and comes in at $800. It's actually not the most expensive special edition keyboard that I've seen for group buy, but $800 is still a large sum of money. There are reasons for the high cost, and it's probably largely in part due to the large brass weight on the bottom, as well as the internal polished stainless steel weight frame that this keyboard features. There's also engravings on the inside of the keyboard, as well as a little cloud engraving above the arrow cluster that adds to the cost, but it is quite nice with all the fine details. Pair it with rising cost of materials, as well as manufacturing issues due to power shortages in China, and you get this price tag. That being said, I'm pretty sure that this keyboard will sell in no time. There's plenty of interest in the various keyboard forums, and a lot of people in this hobby have money to spend. So, if you are interested in picking up the Cloudline, make sure you check the details of the group buy for your regional proxy, and are on time for the drop, or else you might miss out. The Maja will be coming back on October 15th, but this time with some changes. Unlike the V1, the Maja V2 will be gasket mount rather than top mount, and also features a brand new weight design. The previous weight design was just a brass bar with an engraving of the Maja Pahit symbol, but the new design has an aluminum weight bar with a brass symbol badge. The V2 will also allow you to pick between a brass plate or a polycarb plate, which is nice if you prefer a softer typing experience. The optional wrist rest also appears to be updated, and will now come in polycarb with an interesting design. I have mixed feelings towards the design of the new wrist rest, I don't think it looks bad per se, but a simpler design similar to the shape of the V1 wooden wrist rest would look nice as well. One thing of note is that in the current renders, the Madra Pahit name is engraved on the backside of the keyboard, but due to user feedback, Vulcan has agreed to remove the text for a cleaner look. To be honest, I don't have too much to say about this keyboard because there hasn't been any content out there that I can reference. I do think that the board looks really nice, so I'm hoping that the keyboard will be reasonably priced so I can pick one up. Hopefully. Prototypes will be sent to content creators soon, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The VE and C11 are two products that are being sold together on Kono. The VE stands for View Edge and is an AMOLED mini display that is in the shape of an old computer monitor. The C11 is a macro pad in the shape of a small keyboard and is inspired by the Apple M0110 keyboard. I do like how they look, but they are quite expensive. The VE costs $289.99 while the C11 costs $178.99. If you decide to buy both as a set, this comes out to be $468.98, not including shipping and tax. With that money, you could spend it on a ton of different things, and it's around the price of some high-end custom mechanical keyboards. 
I do think that they look pretty cool, but that price is just too high for me to justify the purchase. The mini display and macro pad are cute, but don't offer that much functionality, so it's more of a toy rather than a tool. If you have expendable income and are looking to add some cool gadgets to your desk setup, I think that you can consider picking this up. However, for most people, I think that you should just skip this group buy. 